the service. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We have told you that it's probably all in the videos. It's just a matter of days. It's just a matter of days. Amen. So this week we will have all our services as planned. Hallelujah. Tuesday, intercession prayer at 6 p.m. upstairs or anywhere else. Wednesday, teaching. Hallelujah. Amen. Front line on Friday. Amen. Oh, just come and break all those walls down. Hallelujah. Let's break them down this Friday. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And then we're still planning encounter March 1st to March 3rd, 2019. You have to register. Deadline is approaching here, February 24th. Pastor Paul is the, the leader of the encounter. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says, don't come in the house of the Lord empty-handedly. So whatever you have, please feel free to come in front and put in baskets. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can I ask you, Terry? There is back and come. <laughs> Hallelujah. Six more months, you will become black like me. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That was good. There is back for just for a few months. He has made some decisions in his life. Can, can you display that picture, please, for me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you ready? Yes, Pastor. Amen. <laughs> Terry is living again for you. Why? Because his word is yes and amen. 
God's word are yes and amen. Hallelujah. Let me warm you up. Hallelujah. May God command the blessing in your life. Hallelujah. I was expecting more than that. Hallelujah. Amen. May God command the blessing in your life. Right now, in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God decrees. When God decrees something in your life, if you are lifeless, you become full of life. All the areas that were dead, all of a sudden, they become alive. Hallelujah. So, that's my prayer this morning. That is my prayer this morning. I know some of you have abandoned some dreams and everything. May God revive those dead dreams. May God resuscitate those dreams if they were dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep doing the right thing. Keep it up. Discouragement will come. Attacks will come. But as we said, we were singing, hallelujah, the victory is on our side. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep being obedient to God's voice. Do not be discouraged. Amen. Amen. Today I would like to revisit what we spoke last Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. Last Sunday we were reading from the second book of Kings, chapter 5. Let's read just the verse 1, the, the verse verse. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. This is Syria. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded. Because through him, the Lord has given victory to Aaron. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Hallelujah. We spoke about this last time. I will be brief. The Bible is trying to tell us here, when you read the following verses to the end, that Naaman was a strong man. A good looking guy. Physically he was strong. There was no question everyone could testify that he was rich. He was successful and he was loved by the king. Even God used him to bring victory to Syria. And Syria attacked Israel from time to time. So this man was powerful and he was arrogant. It happens when people have money, they become so powerful. What they say is what people will do, and they become arrogant. But, the first one, the last word says, he had literacy. So his confidence, his assurance, were fake. He was pretending to be someone, but his influence was soon to be decreasing. Hallelujah. It was just a matter of time. The clock was ticking. Sooner or later, people will know that this guy is elected. Last time I explained how you, you, you it's visible someone who has a leper. How it goes from one tiny spot to the entire body. To the time you lose your fingers, your nose and everything. And as soon as people see, as soon as people know, it's done for you. You will be isolated. This man who was loved will be disliked. Amen. He will be forced to wear certain clothes like all the other people who had leprosy. Hallelujah. With belt. So everywhere you go, he makes noise. So people know, ah, this guy is coming. You know, you leave him room. <coughs> Sooner or later, this powerful man who commanded the army, who had victories, who was, who was liked, as soon as he stepped out, 
and he sees people, he will have to declare that he was unclean. Put yourself in this position. You are here, loved by your parents, neighbors, at work, and everywhere. But all of a sudden, that thing that was hidden, it becomes visible. And by law, you have to say, I am unclean. Get out of the way. I'm coming. Unclean. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes, you can have all the strength and everything you can imagine. And then something happens, you go from here to here without transition. Boom. Hallelujah. I know most of us are here. Some of us. We will never say we are unclean. But we are carrying something that is eating our flesh, eating our body, eating our confidence, eating our influence. Eating everything we have, eating your family, eating everything, slowly, slowly, slowly. Today, my message is titled, God is in control. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, God is in control. Yeah. This man did not declare by himself how sick he was. He did not do that. Because he was still holding on, on something. No one will see. No one will know. He was holding on something that was temporary. My question today is, are you holding on something that is temporary? I, when so many things become more important than church, than the house of the Lord, than the word of the Lord, you are holding on something that is temporary. We always sing here, let all the names fade away. Hallelujah. Because that's their destiny. It is only one name that will stand in the end. Brothers and sisters, it happens slowly, slowly, and you don't know. When you look around from like Wednesdays, you can count the people. Where are the other people? You are holding on something that is temporary. Something that is important for you, in reality, it is just temporary. Hallelujah. It is sometimes unnecessary. Not worth it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Anything you believe it is important, God can take it away just in a second. Hallelujah. The book of James chapter 4 verse 14 says, You don't even know what tomorrow will bring, what your life will be tomorrow. You have no clue, you do not know. This general of the army, powerful man, woke up in the morning and then had pain somewhere, very hidden. The Bible does not say really where. And then he noticed, I got this thing. Back home, there is a disease, I don't mean everywhere in the world, called AIDS. When you contract AIDS, it's done for you. It's just a matter of time. I know nowadays we have medication, we have multiple medication. You can keep going on and on and on. But 10 years, 20 years back there, there was nothing. You will just see a big guy who had life and life in abundance. All of a sudden, hallelujah. That's where, how we knew that maybe something is going on over here. Back home, they were saying, Anyati Bong. Amen. That means you stepped on the bomb. You see this, uh, I don't know how they call it, grenade and stuff. They're hidden somewhere there. You were just passing by, and then all of a sudden, you have stepped on something you shouldn't. Hallelujah. You can choose to stay there, and everything is fine. 
but do not move. Amen. Amen. If you try to move, you go. Or something is gone. I mean, something will go. Hmm? And then we say, and yet you go. Amen? That is what happened to this person. He looked and he said, okay. Nanyati <laughs> bomb. Amen. The Bible says your life outside of Jesus is like smoke. It's like a vapor. It appears for a little while and then it vanishes. You may be holding on something strongly that is just a vapor. Just a vapor. And it can disappear like that. You feel strong because you have a very good work. You have many kids. You are a lawyer or whatever you are. You have power. And then you don't compromise. People around you, they have to follow what you do. The word of God does not apply to you. When it's your domain, you are the boss. I'm here to tell you. Your life is like a vapor. It can come, everyone will see it, everyone will applaud, will glorify. And then before you know, it vanishes. This is a call to make your life right. This is a time to make your life right. Live right. Hallelujah. Because you don't know. You may be powerful, you look around, oh man. Amen. 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 The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added unto you. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 39, BBE version, if you have it, it says, He who has the desire to keep his life will have it taken from him. And he who gives up his life because of me, God, will have, hallelujah. It is not about what you like, hallelujah. Maybe I don't get enough, whatever it is, but it's a word, hallelujah. Without a word, take it, tap into it. It's God's word, it's not even my word. So I'm here to tell you, stop going from one truth to another truth. Stop running behind the bishop here, the bishop there. Stop that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe spend more time reading the word by yourself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I don't want to hear, oh, I will be in, in the radio. There is this bishop that is coming to a powerful man. He's coming from Nigeria. Don't, know. <laughs> don't do that anymore. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is not a man that protects you. Amen. Amen. It is not a man that heals you. It is Jesus. Amen. It is his name that delivers you. Amen. It is his blood that was shed on the cross for you to have life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So today I'm begging you. Regardless of your situation, regardless of everything you're experiencing, maybe in your marriage, maybe at work, maybe your church has flooded, regarding the situation you're going through, I'm just here to say God is in control. He is in control. Stay focused. Stay focused. Hallelujah. Do not flinch. The devil will distract you. Brothers and sisters, we're going somewhere. No, I'm serious. Since we went through first fruit, spiritually, we know that we are under heavy attack. The first Tuesday before first fruit feast, God was already talking to us. Apostle was here, and I was here in, in the uh, intercession meeting. 
And then the word came. Apostle said, all the intercessors do not stop um, fasting. After 21 days, we got instructed to continue fasting, to fight what was coming. So up to now, I'm talking to you, people did not stop fasting. They are still fasting. Why? Because spiritually, we don't want people to flinch. The devil will attack, will distract, will bring water from I don't know where. Hallelujah. If you get distracted, you are down. Amen? Amen. Do not be distracted. And keep your hope on Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not be discouraged. I know some situation, okay, you don't know what to do this time. It's okay. I, I don't know. Hallelujah. Amen. But do not be discouraged. The Bible declares in, in the book of Psalm, chapter 25, verse 3. In the Amplified Bible, indeed, none of those who wait on the Lord will be ashamed. Amen. This means there will be a time where everyone will look at you and then will laugh at you. Oh, this mother, I don't know. She's pregnant by her husband, lost his mind. I don't know what she's going to do. Amen? We heard the testimony of a brother. He's here sitting here. He was attacked with a terrible mental issue. We prayed, all of us went there to pray for him. And the, the wife never lost hope. Family were planning, never. Family said, no, bring that guy back home. I mean, they, they were trying to finish him up. The wife said, no. I have a church here too. I have brothers and sisters who can pray too. Amen. You're going nowhere. Hallelujah, you heard the testimony here. In good health. All of them, brothers and sisters, it happened here in this church. Why? Because they got a word. They got a revelation. And they are going somewhere. Hallelujah. They are going somewhere. Do not be distracted. Those who wait on the Lord will not be ashamed. Amen. Those who turn away from what is right and deal with treacherously and okay, whatever it is, without cause, those who compromised will be ashamed. That's what the Bible says. You can choose to compromise. You can choose to do like other people are doing. But you will be ashamed Amen. in the end. Hallelujah. Amen. You will be humiliated. You will be embarrassed in the end. Our friend man was sick. And his disease was a secret. Because he was a high ranking guy. He wanted to keep going until he can now hide his disease anymore. Because as soon as he's visible, you are done. So nobody knew about his sickness. Nobody knew he was sick. He was going out, fight. He was all powerful. But he was carrying something in his body. And then, nobody knew. But not the little girl. Hallelujah. The little girl who was living in his house as a slave, by a revelation, knew that this guy is sick. This guy is a leper. By revelation, the little girl stood up and then she says, I know somebody who knows somebody who can help you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in the situation you have right now, all that you need is to know somebody who knows somebody who can help you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be like this Syrian guy sick by your, your healing is whether or not you know somebody in this church we can all proclaim that we know somebody we know somebody who can help hallelujah Ecclesiastes chapter 14 verse 1 says I have seen 
all that is done on earth, behold, all is handy and pursuit of the wind. Hallelujah. Powerful. You may have lots of money. I don't know your situation. You may have power or position. If you do not know somebody who knows somebody who can help, all that you have, the Bible just said, is vanity and pursuit of the wind. Brothers and sisters, what is important is to know somebody who can help. Only one name can help. Anything else you are after is that wind. Hallelujah. You running, you running, you can never catch it. He runs faster than you. Hallelujah. What saved our general was not money, was not power, was not position. Hallelujah. He was saved. Because the little girl in his house knew somebody who knew somebody who could save, who could help. Hallelujah. My message here is God is in control. This little girl did not appear in the house of the general like that. The last time I checked, people do not lack fall from the sky. Eh? The Bible says to us, she was taken into um, cast by whatever it is. Captivity. So she did not appear. But God was in control. God can use you even in a very difficult situation you don't know. How come I'm applying, I can't have anything. All that I can have is a cleaning work. Go and clean, practically. Maybe God wants to use you right there to, solve, to save another person. Hallelujah. God's ways are complicated. Apostle declared last time that our church is moving forward. And then he said it's not moving forward because of the giving. It is moving forward because of prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The church needs people of all ages. Old people, young people. The church needs fathers and sons, like my brother over there. He plays the guitar and the son plays the drum. That is what the church needs. The church needs people who are willing to be used God cannot use you if you are not willing to be used. Hallelujah. Amen. God used this little girl as a minister to go minister to the most powerful person in Syria. Just a slave. Just a person, a person they don't even say hi to. You know? You don't go and, and hug all your slaves. You know, you don't do those kind of things. But that's the person God used to touch a life of someone. Behold, in this house, God is using children too. Amen. I was talking about the brother who plays the drums. Hallelujah. Amen. But one day I was praying and God opened my eyes and I was able to see all the kids that God is using in the church. Hallelujah. Amen. In all the ministries, the worship team, in the media team, we have kids. You name one team here that does not have children, like this young girl working in the team. You just name one. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Here in our church, we have little girls and little boys who know somebody who can help. That is the difference between people. That is the difference between the general, powerful, very rich, hallelujah, with a lot of influence, and the little girl slave. The difference, that little girl knows somebody who can help. And the general knows nothing. Knows nobody. Has the money, but knows nothing. Hallelujah. The church needs the revelation of hidden things. 
I, I went to, to, to intercession. And then here is small girls right in the intercession, speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Those are the people that God will use to reveal something here. Hallelujah. The little girl told the general, go to Samaria. And, oh, Samaria? So in Syria, powerful Syria, there is nobody who can help. The truth is, in Samaria, there is a prophet. Amen. There was a prophet in Samaria. In all these powerful countries, Syria and, and all the countries, they all had generals, armies, money, power, but they did not have a prophet. Samaria had a prophet. And God caused this little girl that was in captivity in Syria to reveal something. While she was in Syria, and that is very important, she continued to worship her God. She stays in connection with her God. She was probably separate from her family, separate from her friends. Maybe they were crying over there. Maybe over here, she spent her time cleaning here, and cleaning there, and then not having enough food to eat. But she stayed in connection with her God. Amen. And God continued to speak to her and use her mightily. Wow. Brothers and sisters, your situation should never separate you from God. Amen. Ever, ever, ever. Amen. It can be like a joke. I told you my story with the persecution we went through back home. We found ourselves in prison because that was the only place they could collect all the people they wanted to kill. They collect them and they put them in prison. And, uh, and every day they were killing. I told you how many times they brought me and then they brought me back. And they were, you go back and you come here too. Many times. I have never prayed the way I was praying then. My heart was pure. I was ready to die. I was already dead anyway. My heart was pure. I could die at any time. I have to tell you, I, I was okay to die because I was ready to die. Hallelujah. Amen. Why that? I stayed connected to my God. Amen. No matter what, I stayed connected to my God. Amen. We were singing in prison. Fantastic worship without guitar, without drums. It was so beautiful. And then we were all singing, even our hearts outside were singing too. We were praising God too. Hallelujah. But the devil was using them. Hallelujah. This little girl stayed connected to her God. That is what you have to do. Don't curse God when things are not going to Stay connected to your God. Things will never always go the way you want. Yes. You will lose your business, you will lose your friends. But if you have God, you have everything. Yes. Let the business go. Yes. Let the friends go. Yes. You have what is the most important. Why? Because God is in control. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of that strong connection she had with God, God was able to use her. There is a revival in this church. You may not know, probably, but there is one. Hallelujah. Kids are awake. In, even in the Russian team, you have kids. Our own kids, born, raised, and baptized in this church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If there was no that little girl, the prophet would have never known that there is a prophet in Israel. Do not complain, my friends, if things are not going your way, but pray. Pray that God manifests himself in your life, in your house, our work. Pray. Even if they don't like you, just pray. And then you will see the power of God. God works behind the scene. Hallelujah. Amen. You could be a slave. You could be a low-income person. No one says hi to you. But as long as you know, you know somebody who can help, or you know somebody who knows someone who can help. That's all 
you need to know. Hallelujah. That person I'm talking about called the, the world into existence. That's the person who says about himself, I am, I am. I was, I am, and I will be. So I am. From the beginning to the end, I am. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The general was stepping into something he was not comfortable about. Unknown. Whatever was happening to the general was unusual. And this was a very skilled man, very efficient. A strategic military guy. No one could surprise him. No one could cut him out of guard. He had no knowledge, wisdom. He knew things. Hallelujah. But one day he had to bow to the authority of a little girl who was herself. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He had to bow because he did not know someone who could have. Hallelujah. The things of God sometimes are unpredictable. You don't know what will happen. You don't know why things are happening. But we just say, God, no matter what you say, I will just follow you. In issues you may be dealing with, God will bring you step by step by step. Don't jump to the end quickly. God will lead you to your destiny if you follow him step by step. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you do that today? God says, you are a lamb. I am a lamb on your feet. You can understand that when it's dark, when you have a, a, a lamb on your feet, it will just help you to move step by step. As long as you trust the light, you will get where you're going. Because it's step by step by step. The situation you're dealing with could be probably too complicated, very difficult. You may be losing patience. Maybe you have started being in doubt. But today I'm saying God is in total control. In total control. What you need is His grace. Hallelujah. I would like to close by saying, by reminding you one thing. Everyone knows Abraham. We know that God told Abraham, stand up and go. And then he just did what God told him. But what we don't talk about much is Abraham's dad. God told him, Terah, or whatever his name is, stand up and go. Hallelujah. He stood up and he went. But because of circumstances of life, he did not get to where God sent him. He settled somewhere. Hallelujah. I'm warning you. I'm warning all the married couples. All the couples. Everyone. I'm just warning you. All the single, even the children. Obstacles. Distractions. Life changes. Hallelujah. Disappointment. Or even people who are negative in your life can steal God's purpose from your life. Abraham's father was sent somewhere, but he did not get there because the circumstances of life were able to steal the purpose of God in his life. So that's the reason I, I said today, be vigilant, be focused. God is bringing you somewhere for sure. But do not let the circumstances distract you because they may steal the purpose of God for your life. Abraham listened. Abraham faced everything you can imagine, but he stayed focused and he got where God was bringing him until he became the father of many nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that in your doubts, Today, you can stand up. Whatever you're going through, 
If you are having doubts, second thoughts, I just pray that you understood today that what you need is a word. What you need is to know somebody who can help. Hallelujah. If you have a friend, a relative, who does not know somebody, who knows somebody who can help, bring them to church. Because that is urgent, that is the most powerful, and that is the only thing they need. Hallelujah. They need a word. They do not need a great job. They do not need money, a lot of money. They need a word from God. From there, when you seek the kingdom of the Lord, everything else will be given unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to end our service right now. But this is a moment to connect with our Lord. This is a moment to put our Lord, everything that we have that is precious, back into his hands. We have no control of everything, Lord, but you do have control. From the beginning to the end, you control everything. Dear Lord, I pray that you will be in charge. You will be in charge in our lives, Lord. Be in charge in our houses, our work. Be in charge, Lord. We're taking everything that is precious. All our kids, our future, we're giving it back to you. In your hand, we have security. Hallelujah. We thank you for your love, your protection. Hallelujah. Without you, we are nothing. Hallelujah. Dear Lord, strengthen everyone here. All those who are distracted by life. Reveal yourself to them, hallelujah. I pray for joy, I pray for peace, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I pray for mercy. Touch those who are sick, hallelujah. Give a word to those who are looking for one. Just one word, one word, hallelujah. You told the general to jump seven times. What are you telling us today, Lord? In the situation of my friend, my brother, my sister, what are you saying, hallelujah? We want to hear a word, just a word, a word that will heal us, a word that will help us when we align, hallelujah. This week, we put it in your hand, hallelujah. This building is in your hand, hallelujah. There is nothing we can protect outside of your presence, hallelujah. We proclaim defeat in the camp of the enemy. Yes. The enemy has tried, but did not succeed. Yes. We are still here, standing strong, hallelujah, yes. and worshiping our Lord like every single Sunday, hallelujah. And we will not stop, hallelujah. We will have all our services like nothing is happening. Hallelujah. Yes. We praise the Lord and we thank you. And we say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you have received today, put your hands together. Glory to God. We say hallelujah. Amen.